Lesson 18 Jerusalem and Bonds He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Reading Acts 21, 22 and 23 Objective To show how Paul determined to please his father by enduring the sufferings ahead. Background At the end of his third journey, Paul set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem as Jesus had done years before. Luke 5 verse 51 He was determined that nothing would prevent him from witnessing there, despite repeated warning that suffering was ahead. Paul returns to Jerusalem. Acts 21 verses 1 to 14 after a sorrowful departure from Miletus, Paul and his companions sailed down the coast and across the Mediterranean, past Cyprus and landed at Tyre. There they remained seven days with the brethren. During their stay, Paul was again warned not to go to Jerusalem because persecution lay ahead. Verse 4 Palmaeus, which is now Acre and then on to Caesarea. At Caesarea, Paul stayed at the house of Philip, who many years before preached in Samaria and Caesarea. Acts 8 verse 5 and 40 While he was there, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea and enacted a prophecy. He took Paul's girdle and after binding his hands and feet, said that the Jews would do this to Paul in Jerusalem and then deliver him into the hands of the Romans. When they heard that, even Paul's companions joined with the brethren of Caesarea in pleading with the apostle not to go up to Jerusalem. Paul fully realised the danger ahead, and his reply in verse 13 caused them to stop and think. He was not only ready to be bound, but to die also. The secret of his courage and determination was his confident faith in God's power. He knew God would never forsake those that put their trust in him. Psalms 9 verse 10, Philippians 4 verse 13 and 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and 10. Consequently his companions, seeing he would not be persuaded, said, The will of the Lord be done. Verse 14 Jerusalem at last Acts 21 verses 15 to 26 Three days and 120 kilometres later Paul and his companions arrived in Jerusalem to a welcome from the Jerusalem brethren. The next day they met with James and all the elders to inform them of their preaching and present the collection of money from the Gentile ecclesias for the poor brethren in Judea. Verse 18 James and the elders glorified God because of what they heard, but warned Paul of dangers facing him. There were rumours circulating that Paul was encouraging Jews to completely forsake the customs of the law of Moses. This was untrue. Paul knew that it was no longer necessary to keep the law to be saved, but he did not oppose the proper use of the law. 1 Timothy 1 verse 8, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20 In order to prove the rumours false, the elders suggested that Paul join four other Jewish believers in the temple for the purification ceremony of the Nazarite vows. See Romans 6. Hoping that this would reassure everyone, Paul agreed and made his way to the temple. Riot in the Temple Acts 21 verses 27 to 40 When the seven days of the ceremony was almost ended, Paul was recognised in the temple by some visiting Jews from Asia. They hated him, and so they immediately stirred up a riot. They thought that some of the Gentiles who were Paul's companions had entered the temple. 
they seized Paul and dragged him forth from the temple, intent on beating him to death. Fortunately, the Roman captain, Claudius Lysus, heard the uproar and immediately took a band of soldiers to quell the riot. He ordered Paul to be chained and carried into the tower of Antonia near the temple. Meanwhile, the people followed, shouting, Away with him! as they had done years before with Jesus. Compare Luke 23, verse 18. On the way up the stairs to the tower, Paul asked the captain if he could speak to the people. Paul's defence before the Jews. Acts 22, verses 1 to 30. Paul was given permission and from the steps he dressed the crowd in Hebrew. The main points were, he was a Jew, a student of the famous teacher Gamaliel in this very temple. Paul had lived perfectly according to the law, verse 3. In his mistaken zeal for God, he had persecuted the followers of Jesus Christ to death, verse 4. He told them of his trip to Damascus in detail, how he was struck down and blinded by a light from heaven. He told them how his sight was restored, of his baptism and his total change in life. Verses 5 to 11. Ananias had come to him and given him the great commission to be Christ's witness to all men. Verses 12 to 16. Christ had appeared to him in a vision to tell him to get out of Jerusalem and depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Verses 17 to 21. They listened quietly up to that point, but that was just too much for the crowd to take. To think that God would deal with Gentiles was blasphemy to them. So they burst forth in frantic demonstration. They shook their clothes, hurled dust into the air and shouted, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Verse 22. The captain could not understand this sudden outburst and so quickly ordered Paul to be taken into the castle. His intention was to extract the reason for the uproar from Paul by torture. However, Paul avoided lashings by asserting his Roman citizenship. Since Roman citizens weren't allowed to be since Roman citizens weren't allowed to be beaten without a fair trial. This was the first step in the process that would eventually bring Paul to Rome. Nevertheless, Claudius Lysus, in order to find out the cause of the riot, commanded the Sanhedrin to meet and conduct an inquiry. Paul before the Sanhedrin Acts 23 verses 1 to 10 before the Sanhedrin, Paul was confident and said that he had lived in all good conscience before God. In other words, his whole life was governed by a constant consciousness of God's requirements. He knew God's requirements and made every effort to obey them fully. However, the high priest was enraged at Paul's statement and ordered him to be smitten, contrary to the law. Leviticus 19 verse 35 Deuteronomy 25 verses 1 and 2 Paul responded by prophesying, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. Verse 3 Josephus records that the Jews later murdered Ananias the high priest, thus fulfilling Paul's prediction. Paul then continued and divided the Sanhedrin into two groups by saying he was a Pharisee and believed in the resurrection of the dead. This caused a great uproar because the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection and so did not support him, but the Pharisees did. As Paul was again in danger of being torn apart, the chief captain ordered the guards to remove him to the safe custody of the castle. From Jerusalem to Caesarea Acts 23 verses 11 to 35 during the night, the Lord Jesus appeared to Paul. In verse 11, compare chapter 18, verse 19, and chapter 22, verse 17. 
and encouraged him to maintain his faith and comfort him by the assurance that he must also defend the truth in Rome. Just think how low Paul must have been feeling for the Lord Jesus Christ to appear to him. The next day, certain Jews gathered and, because of their hatred of Paul, made a vow not to eat until Paul was dead. To make matters worse, the powerful chief priests approved their wicked plan, but they had similarly acted with Christ and Stephen. They devised a scheme to assassinate him, but fortunately Paul's nephew overheard this and told Paul. When Claudius Lysus heard of the Jewish plot, he immediately sent Paul to Caesarea, where Felix was the Roman governor. Escorted by 470 soldiers, he also sent a message to Felix outlining the details of the temple riot and the conspiracy against Paul. At Caesarea, Paul was kept in custody until his opponents arrived from Jerusalem. This is another remarkable illustration of how God overturns the schemes of men to achieve his purpose. Paul was to preach in Rome, and there was absolutely nothing man could do to upset the purpose of God. Summary and lesson for us. Despite the many warnings that trouble and hardship lay ahead, Paul had sufficient faith and courage and determination to press on. He did not want to endure the bonds and afflictions that awaited him, yet he realised that God knew best, and therefore that his will should be done. We often only do the things we want to do, but this may not always be what God wants us to do. Paul realised too that God truly cares for all those who love and fear him. Although he almost lost his life in Jerusalem, God manipulated the evil plans of men to save his life. God watches over us too and will care for us and guide us if we put our trust in him and obey him. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible at gmail.com and we look forward to you listening to the next lesson which will be called Paul's Defence Before Rulers.